Cod Rocks, Eastern Massachusetts Rocks. We are building in the middle of this crazy political year where the pundits and the oligarchies, they think they, think they outsmart us. And I'll tell you, I am so happy today because what we are doing is instead of waiting for November, instead of being frustrated, we're becoming a mass base of resistance for this war. It's going to take the American people 100% to turn this war around just like we did in Vietnam. The first day I got to Vietnam, I landed in Da Nang Air Base, got off the plane and hitchhiked on Highway 1 to my new unit, to my unit. I was picked up by a truckload of grunt marines with two company grade officers, first lieutenants. We were about five miles down the road where there were some Vietnamese children uh, at the gateway of the village and they gave the old finger gesture, gesture at us. Uh, it was uh, understandable that they picked us up from the GIs there. They stopped the truck, they didn't stop the truck, they slowed down a little bit and it was just like response, the guys got up, including the lieutenants, and just blew all the kids away. There was about five or six kids blown away there. And then the truck just moved, uh, continued down the hill. That was my first day in Vietnam. Winter Soldier was something that those of us that were founding members of the Vietnam Veterans Against the War uh, kind of blew in on the scene just about the time they did away with the draft. And so the, kind of the resistance among students and young people, although they were the countercultural types, the yippies and the hippies, and uh, God bless them, they never left the stage. But the rest of the people kind of turned inward because it wasn't about them. And somehow we were coming home in droves from Vietnam and we were isolated and we were quite frankly kind of whacked. We were kind of whacked. Um, and I think what happened is what really drew us together was uh, we had a very important historical march we marched from, uh, it was Labor Day, 1970, we marched from uh, Morristown, New Jersey, to Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. And you know, Valley Forge is where that guy Thomas Paine was asked by George Washington in the winter of 1777 to come on out down there and rouse the troops. Those New England farmers wanted to go home. None of them were being paid during the Revolutionary War. They got their pay and their bennies only if they won. So the farmers and the whiskey guys had to go home. And those that stayed around at Valley Forge and later fought on at the Battle of Trenton, they were the Winter Soldiers because they stayed on their posts. And that's what this film was about. And when we had the Winter Soldier investigation, we did it, I'll, I'll be very brief, we did it not knowing whether we would be uh, arrested by the Defense Department or the Marine Corps or the Army or the Navy or the Air Force because some of us were still on inactive reserve. In a cramped Detroit hotel, a new organization, Vietnam Veterans Against the War, held an unprecedented investigation that exposed a much deeper truth. I think the Winter Soldier investigation was to try to point out, it wasn't really in defense of Cali, but it was uh, going after the notion that the policies of the U.S. military created things like My Lai, okay? That it was a policy. It was both a written and an unwritten policy. And the truth has to be told. You can't duck away from the truth. You can't lie and put up a smoke screen and say, oh, this is a, the words they used back then, an isolated instance of aberrant behavior. America went through, went through a choke, okay, because they didn't want to believe that these things occurred in the name of the American people, supposedly supporting freedom and liberation and democracy throughout the world. And there was this terrible slaughter this terrible, inane slaughter. What led to this investigation was a couple of things. First of all, there had been jurists involved. There had been the Bertrand Russell uh, tribunals in Europe. Uh, a few people in the United States, particularly a group called Citizen Soldier, or the Citizens, Con Citizens Committee to Investigate War Crimes, uh, came together, and there was great resistance by the Nixon administration and particularly the CIA as we started to put this connection from one side of the world to the other. And, uh, but what the really catalyst was when Bill Rusty Cowley was singled out as the guy in charge of Me Lai. And that's what freaked us out. And this is where people came together. And there was one fellow by the name of Telford Taylor who had been a, who had been a jurist in Nuremberg. And he said, wait a second, we hung a Japanese admiral. His name was Shimashita. Because at the end of World War II in the Pacific, the Japanese army took this guy and made him in charge. Uh, no, the Japanese imperial <coughs> government took a Navy admiral and put him in charge of all the Japanese army units in the Philippines. This guy was on record 
as being absolutely against cruelty, war crimes, and, and, and unnecessary violence in his own command of the Japanese Navy. At the end of the war, he was tried. And even though the record showed that this guy individually in his command never did anything cruel, never allowed it, and actually disagreed with it, the Yamashita principal said, if you're the CO on paper, you swing. And we swung him by the neck till he was dead. And when this happened with me, like we turned around and said, don't blame it on the second lieutenants. It's got to go back up to those two and three and four star guys. And the guy said, hey, man, it goes right to the White House. Yeah. So the Martian president yeah. is that eventually, sooner or later, someone's got to pay the piper for this insanity in Iraq. And I hope it's George Bush and Cheney. Yeah. And I hope someday yeah. America becomes brilliant enough to have a presidential jail for these scum that take over the body politic and manipulate us. Manipulate us through the oligarchical and dynastic fantasies. And we just got to stop. Well, all we're into this, hey, hey, Bush, get the fuck out of town! Oh, wow. <laughs> I need a presidential jail. They got one in South Korea. We need to build a base of resistance, and that's what we're doing today. Look at the people who come out on this beautiful day to Falmouth and say, you know, we're not waiting. We're not waiting for pie in the sky and the electoral process. we got our work to cut out. And I think it's incredible this country pulled together and said, hey, even though the fifth anniversary of the war in Iraq is coming up in March, everyone's going to pull back and allow the actual participants of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan to stand up and start telling and communicating to the American people in a very popular way what's going on in our name. And that's going to put the Iraq war back on the top of the list. And I hope this is what this resistance of community is doing, reminding people it's not the economy. The economy is connected to the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's where the connection is. And if you look at the recent election, both the Republicans and the Democrats polled either indicated it was immigration, a lame issue, but something has to be dealt with, the war in Iraq, or the economy. And both sides, the Republican Party and the Democrats, that have essentially agreed that 60% of the larger issues out there in America, remember the 2006 election, where the mandate of the American people was, get out of this fucking war in Iraq! Okay, let me sum it up this way. The, the most beautiful thing about Winter Soldier, the film, and the investigation, and what our young men and women are going to do with the Iraqi vets against the war in March is this. Soldiers themselves are rescuing the humanity of this country. Many of us feel so bad, so bad, because the soul, the soul of what we thought was America has been wrenched out, and some of us are getting old. This, is what the, this isn't the world we want to leave our kids. This is not the world we want to give our kids. So, you know what I'm saying? Some of us, uh, the 60s are coming around again, folks, and this time we really got to, we really got to unite the many and defeat the few. You know, I know Tom Brokaw likes to say the greatest generation. They all say nice things about Grandpa and Grandma after they drop them off at the nursing home and wipe them out, okay? But actually, many World War II veterans turned their backs on us. That's what allowed us to create our own organizations, okay? And I think the greatest generation is yet to come. It's not something that happened in the past, okay? And I just think I'm going on too much. And, uh, hey, peace, salam, shalom, bombing, and Vietnamese.